Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In today's video, I'll be showing you Bolt, which was a third-party visual scripting add-on for Unity, which is recently being acquired by Unity themselves. I've had it for around about a month now, and with Bolt 2 in development, I feel like this is the perfect time to actually show you guys it in case you haven't seen it already. I hope you're looking forward to it. Let's get started. But first, I'd like to thank Admix for sponsoring this video. Admix is a platform designed to help devs monetize their game without interrupting the player's experience by seamlessly placing ads inside the game world. It takes less than one hour to get set up and with no coding required, just drag and drop the ad placements into your game. It's also fully integrated with Unity and Unreal Engine. There's also an online dashboard with plenty of analytics to help you optimize as you go. Check it out by following the link in the description down below. There's also a link to their Discord server if you'd like to be part of the Admix community. So if we have a quick look through the asset page first, okay, this is very similar to Unreal Engine's blueprints or any other, you know, software that has visual scripting solutions. So it's as simple as writing code in graphs, which a lot of you that are programmers just like me, I thought for a long time that visual scripting was, you know, an alternative. You either program or you do visual scripting. And I thought, well, if I like coding, I can just code everything, right? But then the more I've done in games over time, I've come to the realization that I feel like coding has its place and so does visual scripting. Just like how, you know, when you go to do shaders, you might use a visual scripting solution. If, for example, your game has dialogue, you don't actually hard code the entire dialogue. You might code the dialogue system, then you use visual scripting tools like node editing tools to actually link everything together. I feel like that's what visual scripting should be used for. It should be linking together logic that you've already written. So for example, if your game has abilities and you have loads of different abilities, you know, you might have heals, damages, buffs, debuffs, damage over times, you know, you might spawn in projectiles, fly, fly them off into the distance, make them explode. All that kind of logic, of course you can write it in code, but then you notice you'll start having code files for all your different abilities, you'll have some inheritance tree, you know, you could try doing it with composition, but it'll still be kind of an awkward mess. I feel like this is the perfect example of where visual scripting should be used. It's also really good for one-off things. So for example, if you have a huge open world game and in one room, in one little section of your game, you have a thing that you interact with and it does something, but nothing in the, else in the game does that. You want this like little thing to have its own logic. It's perfect for this graph because you can actually have these graphs uh, save into your project, just like scripts that you can reuse and attach to anything you want. Or you can make embedded graphs, which I'll show you in a minute, where you can actually have the graph just for that one object. It doesn't get saved into your you know, scripts or macros folder or anything like that. It's just a single instance, some custom logic in that one place just for doing that one thing. So the only negative I've really seen people say is that it's not as performant as writing c -sharp code yourself, which is true right now, okay? With Bolt, Bolt 1, okay, it's not as performant. But as I said, Bolt 2 is in development and if you buy Bolt 1, you actually get Bolt 2 for free, okay? Maybe there's a cutoff point when you have to actually have bought it before, so you might want to check that out before you know going to buy it and then realizing you don't actually get Bolt 2 for free, but there's definitely a period where that was true, and I've actually bought it before that point, so I I'll be getting Bolt 2 for free. Um, they're redoing the UI, so obviously this looks really nice. I, I like how it looks now, but this still looks 10 times better. And then also, your code gets compiled into c -sharp code, so you actually gain the performance benefits of writing c -sharp code as opposed to it being done via reflection. And as you see here, it's very easy to follow the logic, you know, on collision enter is just a callback commander behaviors get, and then you have a branch, which is just an if statement. Here's the condition of the if, if the tag is equal to enemy, if that's true, then spawn in this explosion object, okay? And then uh, spawn it at the, collect, uh, the contact point from up here. And with the rotation quaternion.identity, that's a common thing we use. And then we want to set the health and then we get the health and reduce it, right? So as you see on here, health is, and then health minus, the uh, force magnitude. So like I was saying with uh, the performance problems, you don't want to have to choose between using Bolt at the cost of performance or you know not using Bolt because you need performance. So like it says here, you get the best of both worlds. When you create a graph, it'll automatically be converted to human readable C sharp like you see down here. So he drags in a node, does transform.rotate and it actually does the code here. So you see that at runtime, at uh, real time, sorry. And then Unity will actually convert that to C++, okay, to get native speed on any target platform. And then for Bolt 2, there's tons of extra features that you uh, may be missing out in Bolt 1. So Bolt 1 already seems to have everything you need in terms of, you know, you can build a full game with it, but just adding all these extra features will make it so much better, and these will be coming in Bolt 2. So anyway, I'll give you a quick example inside Unity. So I've obviously already got it. So in my package manager, I can import it like so. Okay, press import. Once you've pressed install and then you go to tools, there'll be an install bolt button, import, and then it asks you to go through a little install wizard. So if I press import like this, give it a second. Okay, 
it needs to actually compile all the nodes for the code in your project. And it can also access code, uh, for example, in like, you know, the root Unity engine, of course, because you need to be able to call all those methods. And it even lets you use things in just normal, like C sharp packages that you get access to normally. Okay, so for the setup wizard, you can press next and you can choose either human or programmer naming. So I prefer programmer naming so I can see it just as if it was code. Okay. Then it asks you for assemblies to include, so all the different libraries. So by default, it adds all the Unity ones, the Bolt ones here, and at the top, it adds some you know, default like MS Core Lib and assembly things, okay? If you want to add your own, so for example, if you've imported a third-party asset that's got its own namespace, you can add the namespace here, okay? You can go find it in this list. Then you can go next. Same with types, so here as it says, Choose the types you want to be able to use for variables and units. If it inherits from one behavior, it's done for you automatically. So if you've got any classes that you want to use as a data type, but it's not a mono behavior, then you can add that here, okay? Then you can press generate. Okay, so now it's done. Let's actually write some logic. So to write some logic, we need to add a graph to our, to our object, okay? And to do that, we actually go down here and we add a flow machine, okay? Flow machine is basically just the thing that stores your graphs. It's the thing that runs your graphs, okay? It has all the mono behavior callbacks and it, it, it calls them in the graph. Now we need an actual graph itself. So that goes in here. We can either have a macro or an embed. So I'm gonna start with a macro and then convert to an embed. The two differences is macro can be reused. So I can go make another uh, sphere, okay? And I can just have it on both. It's just like a normal C-sharp script you attach to different things. Whereas an embed is kind of unique to this object. Uh, if you start messing with prefabs and embeds, it gets a bit weird. I think it can work, but I'd recommend if you're actually needing it to be on mul multiple things, then go for uh, a macro. So what we can do here is with our uh, macro, we can actually go make a new one. Okay, I'm going to go put it inside tutorials, visual scripting, macros, and we'll just call this test. Okay, and here is our macro. It's in our folder over here, and it's on our sphere. Let let's actually get rid of our our sphere two, let's put it in our sphere one. Okay, you can give it a title and summary in case you have multiple machines on the same object. Uh, and what we want here is um, we want to have reference to our rigid body. I'm gonna say, you know, when you hit spacebar, add a force upwards or something to the rigid body. So the way we do that is we want to edit the graph. It opens on my screen, bring it over here. So now we're inside our graph. We have the start and the update callback, just like how we would in a normal mono behavior. And for this, we're taking input to do something. So we don't need start, we just need update. And we actually need reference to a rigid body. So the way we do that is we need it inside our variables over here. This is where you'd at the top of your script normally have variables. We need reference to a rigid body. And that rigid body is not in the scope of this graph. This is where you'd store local private variables. We need it to be passed in from this object. Okay. So over here, we can add something called the rigid body, or we can just call it RB. Okay. It's going to be public. So let's, well, let's just go with RB. Okay, and it's of type rigid body. I already had that selected from earlier. You just type in here, you find rigid body. Okay, the value you can leave as null because you, you know, reference that in inspector in a minute. And we can drag that in. So now we have the rigid body variable. And what do we want to do? Well, we want to say whenever you press spacebar, add a force, right? So over here, we'll say input. We're going to use the old input system just for ease here. Okay, input dot get key down. Okay, so like so, uh, get key down. And we have the enum of the keys here, so let's just find space. It's gonna be a bit annoying to find. There we go, space up at the top. Okay, so when I press space, so this is gonna return this is gonna return a Boolean, right? This is did I press space? Okay. True or false. This this pink one is a Boolean, true or false. So we need a branch. So let's add a branch, which is an if statement. So we're gonna say branch. And we pass in the bool. Okay, and this uh, top part is the control. So for example, um, this gets called, goes into here, then this gets called, okay, so this if gets called, and the boolean we use is whether we press space or not, okay? So if we didn't, we don't want to do anything, so false can just be left empty. If we did what want to do true, what we actually want to do is, we want to grab our rigid body over here, okay? We want to add force to it. So what we can do is we can say over here, add force, like so. Okay, rigidbody.addForce. The force mode, I'll go with uh, velocity change maybe, okay? To call it, it happens when this if is true, okay? So if down is true, then add force. And it's telling us uh, there's a problem here because we need to actually 
um, have this this RB be set. The rigid body is currently null, it's warning us, but we'll set it in a minute. And as for the force, well, we can also have that as a variable set in the inspector. So I'm gonna have a new variable name and just call it a force, okay? And set the force to be a vector free. Drag that in here, feed that in here, okay? So now we've got, let's just shuffle this around, okay? So we say, if we press spacebar, add a force to the rigid body passed in, and the force is also passed in here. So let's say five is the default value, okay? And that's all we want to do. We just wanna add force to a rigid body whenever we press the space key. So now that we're done, we can close this, okay? Go back to our scene, and you see on the sphere now, we have a vector free here, and we have a rigid body, which is currently null. So uh, it's a bit confused here because we need to actually do this and drag it in, okay? But now that's fixed, so, if we press play and give it a second to load into the game, we hit space, it actually adds a force upwards. Keep hitting space and it keeps going. We can spam space and it goes up into the sky. Okay, and there we go. And then now if we simply duplicate the sphere, you'll see we have two spheres using the exact same thing. Obviously the sphere one is using rigid body one and the non-sphere is using sphere without a one. Okay, so th these are the two separate spheres. We put them over here, we press play, and they should both, of course, listen to the same input and do the exact same thing. So we're not expecting different behavior here. But then we can go to sphere one and say, actually, it's a y of 10. And of course, this one will go up higher. And let's say you have this behavior all over your game. Obviously, you leave it as a macro and you reference it in all your different objects but you might have a thing that is unique, okay? So let's imagine uh, this sphere is unique. It's the only thing in your game that has the logic where you press space and uh, you know you add some force up. It's quite a unique behavior. Well, in that case, you don't really want to clutter your project with loads of you know files like this of all your different like connections. So you can make this an embed, which would mean you don't actually need a file for it in your project. So if we go to the sphere, you can press convert, okay? Now by pressing convert, it's now an embed graph. So we can actually delete this. If we go to our sphere, it's got a graph, just like we had earlier. It has the update tick, it has everything here, okay? Um, we actually don't need this graph variable, sorry, the object variable for the rigid body because it's already on this game object. Uh, so for the force, we do wanna set that. So let's um, get rid of this. Now this rigid body, okay, is already here on the object. So we can uh, bring this over here and select it, okay? Keep in mind this thing is the sphere. So we're saying get our own rigid body and then grab this variable from the, the little v variables thing back in the editor, okay? Nothing else needs to change. We no we've now got our sphere here with one variable, which is the force and our embed graph, which we can call, um, you know, add force, press play, and it should work just fine. When it loads and I hit space, and we go up like so, okay? And it's unique to this one object. So we don't have it anywhere else. We don't have any, you know, files over here that get a folder that gets cluttered with tons of macros. It works just fine. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know down below what you want to see next. Hope you understand, you know, even as a programmer, there's still use in these tools. They're not necessary, but I see that if you have a tool that improves your workflow, then why not make the most of it, you know? Uh, so yeah, let me know down below what you want to see next. As I said, if you want more Bolt stuff, let me know that, or non-Bolt stuff, I don't mind. Just give me all the suggestions, and I'll get around to as many of them as I can over time. Thanks always for watching, I'll see you in the next one, and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to Taylor Rustio, Francisco Lira, John Selig, Liz Kimber, Ansikan, Sam Marcus, Matt Fryer, Ellen, Fabian Reno, Malvin, Samran, David McDermott, Exit, Josh Folsom, Bearded Eye, Dustin Miller, Rack, Yoris Letter, and Rene. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our Udemy course and our website. If you could check any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.